from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is the Thai Cats This Week with RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker. Thai Cats This Week is back. That means the Tiger Cats are back. Seems like forever since they've had a game. I'm RJ Broadhead, Luke Tasker. It, it does seem like a long time since we've we've seen the Tiger Cats on the field, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. The uh, the early bye weeks in the season are always sort of, I don't know, it's a puzzle to figure out if they're good or bad. And I think, you know, if you go back and listen to our recording at the end of the Montreal game of the broadcast, I think there was a consensus that it was sort of unfortunate timing. But, <laughs> you know, you got to make the most of it. And a bye week, has its have, of course, has its built-in benefits. Um, but, yeah, sort of a strange pause here before, we, before the Ticats can sort of move on with the rest of their season uh, starting this weekend. Well, what did you think? Did you feel like it, and as a player, would it be a good time for a buy, or did you want to just kind of move on and get back on the field after what happened against Montreal? My initial response from a, from a player's perspective is that every bye week is good, and you just you need it no matter what, no matter how where you are in the season, you need it physically. You can make the most of it. You can see your family. Uh, you know, training camp ends and you move right into the season, so you kind of there's still some. Still, some guys probably uh, looking for their uh, you know apartment for the year and stuff. There, you know, there's some logistical yeah. things that a bye week can help with, and that's a player's perspective. That's sort of the stuff that doesn't really sort of matter to to people outside of the, those inner circles. But uh, I, it, for me, and my my reaction after the game, RJ was sort of more so from a coaching or management perspective that like you kind of want to get right back to work. A player always needs a bye week. It's the you know, it's the, it's the PA, the, you know, that protects the players that fights for the bye weeks, right? That's, it's mm-hmm. a player protection thing. It's, it's, it's part of, it's, it's to help the, uh, you know, the healthy and liveliness of the players through the season. But from the coaching and, and, uh, you know, management perspective, it is a tough pause. And that's, that's sort of was my point in, in our broadcast that, yeah, I mean, the Ticats are trying to get a lot of things corrected and they have sort of a laundry list of, of, um, uh, of corrections to make, uh, that we'll get into here. But, uh, uh, you just hope that the rest sort of outweighs, uh, you know, maybe just the the hiccup to the rhythm of the season, and uh, we'll see. I think there, I think there's actually some statistics statistics coming out as the season forms into shape. You know, the league starts putting out all these interesting little quirky statistics that you and I, of course, love to <laughs> to bounce back and forth. The weirder yeah. the statistic, the better. Went for us, definitely. But uh, every team that's that's come off a of bye week so far in this young uh, young part of the season here has won won their game. So. Uh, maybe it's a good thing. It is. It is. And my statistics, the the in-depth statistics, go back to 2021, first year doing play-by-play for the Tiger Cats. And that's when the Tiger Cats Audio Network originated. So since 2021, I'm going to make this sound as, as great as possible. Since 2021, <laughs> the Tiger Cats have never lost coming out of a bye week. So that's a couple of bye weeks in 2021, three last season, and here we are here we in are. 2023. So I don't know, is it, is it guaranteed win against Ottawa? Can we can we go that far or not yet? <laughs> well, like it's, it's more than that. They've got a very successful record at home against Ottawa uh, as well. So... Uh, to be honest, you, you know we could get lost in these statistics. There's still just a ton of a ton of work uh, to do. It's, it's it is bye week or no bye week, Ottawa or no Ottawa. It's going to be a it'll be a hard game uh, uh, here for the Tie Cats uh, at home. Well, and it didn't work out great for them during the time off because Toronto, boom, they had week one off. All of a sudden, they're three and zero, rattled off three wins. Montreal's got a couple of wins. Ottawa has a win, so that leaves. The Tiger Cats in the basement, and you now have to take a quick glance over to the West Division, see what's going on there. And Calgary has one win. Edmonton's having all kinds of problems. Tiger Cats have them next week. It'll be a short week for the Tiger Cats because they'll play on Thursday in Edmonton. But mm. we know the Elks have struggled, especially at home, so that could work out for the Tiger Cats. But they have to take care of business against Ottawa because, as mentioned, Red Blacks have a win. If they beat the Tiger Cats, now they have two wins, not insurmountable, but a terrible hole, and it would be another start to the season where the Tiger Cats lose their first four games. So I know you're not going to say we're in must-win category, but this has to be really close to a, a very 
mandatory win? Can we say mandatory instead of must? <laughs> it's pretty much Maybe the same word. I'm <laughs> same not sure meaning. if that's different, actually. But <laughs> No, same meaning, different word. <laughs> but you know what? The difference is, RJ, remember last year the Ticats were struggling and it was like everyone was like, ah, oh, no problem. The East was just was just really bad. At the, across yeah. the board, it was just it was just nobody was clawing ahead uh, uh, in the East. And, of course, an, uh, you know, inner divisional game somebody's gonna uh, get the win in most cases but but uh this year's different toronto is a good looking team and so yeah. if they get out ahead then you know the spots are fewer and fewer so uh it is it, in a sense i think the urgency is greater this year than it was last year when the tie cats uh were at zero and three uh sort of you know par for the course in in, in what was a really struggling east division which by the way, produced the the Grey Cup champion, obviously in the in the Argonauts, who pulled it together. You know when it counted, but uh, uh, that that same Argonaut team is is off to a really great start now, and so it changes the the dynamic. Uh, and Ottawa, well, they look a little different this week now with Jeremiah Mazzoli, who is you know in the top fifty of quarterbacks ever in the CFL. He's a guy who Hamilton fans obviously know very well. Who I know very well and respect and i mean he's and so now they've got their guy there too so it's uh yeah it's go time man it's time to, you gotta you gotta start winning games i i, I looked when i when i saw jeremiah Masoli would be the starter do you think he had this this game circled on the calendar that that's my target date to be healthy and ready to go he may have and you know fortunate uh scheduling too you know if it came about you know the, the league uh formats these games and it by chance falls where his injury is kind of getting getting you know healthier and healthier and uh you know from just a this like CFL fans should be excited for this game i mean this is a really this is a really great moment when you get one of these big guys back on the tv for the you know back back in the back on the field for for just the the healthiness of the league um you look through <laughs> Jeremiah's history, you know, he's got, you know, literally hundreds of passes and, and completions and thousands of yards against all these different CFL teams, except for one line across the board. He has no stats ever against the Hamilton Tiger Cats, right? Because he's <laughs> never, this will be the first time he's ever played against the Hamilton Tiger Cat team and in Hamilton. I mean, it's just a very, very exciting CFL day. So I'm excited for Jeremiah and excited to see him play. Uh, and you know the Ticats have have their work cut out, but uh, you know when you flip the flip the side of that, and you have Matt Schiltz, who is like you and I've talked about repeatedly, he'll do mm -hmm. some things that are very impressive in every single game, and he certainly did that uh, against uh, Montreal, uh, and it's eliminating those costly mistakes, um, and 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 he's he's playing at, at a at a great uh, at an expert cal uh, level as well. Yeah. Okay. So. A couple of issues on, on offense. Two straight games where the Tiger Cats haven't scored a touchdown. How concerned are you about that? Uh, fairly concerned. Uh, that you you gotta you gotta uh, change that pretty quickly. So, boy, there's a couple places to point to, and I guess my first one is first downs. Um, uh, the Tiger Cats just uh, time and again, if they're if they're moving the ball down the field, they're doing so with some miraculous second down plays. You know, uh, you know, or they're or you know, and if they are able to string a drive together where they're putting themselves in a second and less than five, they look they look great. I mean, they they have they're efficient. They're they're able to get the, to spread the ball to different players. Uh, but for much of their games, they've really really struggled to put themselves in a favorable second down position, and that's just a, a, a recipe for for uh, an inefficient offense. Mm -hmm. You can't a second a second in eight or more is a very low probability play. I mean, you're going to be making that less than, you know, maybe 30% of your, of your tries. So not easy to do. Um, their opponents specifically to Montreal uh, were, were efficient on first down. That was, that was, it was a very different looking uh, offense when the field would flip. Uh, so that's the first thing. And then the other part is the times where they have gotten into the scoring zone. Uh, they've been unable to finish those drives uh, frequently. So, uh, and especially early on when you, when you're when uh you know you know the game is still still young and you're not if you're not behind you got to be able to put some points on those board on the board early so you can give yourself the option to kick that field goal later you can give yourself uh the option to to just kick a single instead of having to go for two in those situations that we've seen them in so uh score zone efficiency and first down efficiency is what is what we need to see and uh Maybe a different conversation, but but also uh, contributing to this is, of course, the turnovers. And 
of the yeah. interceptions that we've seen. Both of those were were the timing of them, the field position of them, and then of course one produced a defensive touchdown uh, in Montreal. Those two turnovers, um, you've got to eliminate those as well. Yeah, Montreal defensive touchdown, special teams touchdown, and of course touchdowns on offense. And you've talked about that. The chances of losing a game when you score in all three aspects are are pretty slim, and they certainly didn't lose. I, I remember you and I looked at each other first two drives or early on tiger cats got the field goal and then they got another field goal but kind of felt like if those had been touchdowns it would have been a, a different game a six nothing lead obviously didn't didn't hold up but i remember you and i talking in the commercial break thinking that's good it's a good lead but touchdowns would have made a, a huge difference and as it turned out it it did come back to haunt the tiger cats because the offense went quiet yeah, you're absolutely right. And, you know, a, a team that's operating, you know, really well at a high level, firing on all cylinders, you know, they're going to follow up those two field goals with another, you know, a uh, good drive. But when you're when you're trying to find yourself as a team, you got to kind of capitalize on the chances that you get. And, and yeah, the Ticats really had a chance to to, uh, you know, take a take a really uh, impressive uh, lead in that first quarter of the game in Montreal it's it's sort of a chicken and egg thing i mean do you do you have does confidence come first and then success or do you need success and then have confidence and 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 you and you you gotta you gotta take you gotta get lucky but then you also gotta capitalize on your opportunities and um you know i i just i i i keep going back i think about those interceptions both to the right side of the field you know the offensive perspectives right right to the right and way out to the sidelines and those tough throws and coach o mentioned mentioned in the coach o show this you know we are all accustomed to, you know, quarterback through interceptions, his fault, quarterback fault, bad throw, bad throw. You know, there's other things that we can't see too, and he alluded to the routes being run as well. And so there's there's other things in the works with this offense that has to get solidified. And uh, you know, you do have still um, while he is a veteran and Matt Schultz, you know, this is not the offense that you that we that the Ticats expected to have out there, uh, you know, for their fourth game of the season. Yeah, well, Matt Schultz has uh, a little more time to prepare for this start. Taylor Powell back up, and Kai Loxley signed as the third-string quarterback. If it's uh, a successful, healthy game for the Tiger Cats, we probably won't see him, but he'll be he'll be on the sidelines. Game time is seven o'clock. Kickoff is seven o'clock at Tim Hortons Field, and this is the first South Plaza Saturday of the season. So, all sorts of great things for. Families to do just south of Tim Hortons Field. There'll be inflatables. There'll be face painting. It's going to be a beautiful day, too. Beautiful evening. So get out there. There's an autograph session with some of the members of the Tiger Cats. Tim Cheatwood will be there. He's the alumnus of distinction. And one lucky attendee to South Plaza Saturday will win a pair of tickets to the 110th Grey Cup at Tim Hortons Field in November. And if you're there in the South Plaza and you're there early... You might even get to see Luke Tasker walking in from the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Very early, though. We're we're up there in the, on the seventh floor preparing quite early. But uh, yeah, what a fun what a fun day in the South Plaza, and, and uh, another plug for the upcoming Grey Cup, which I'm very yeah. excited for the the unabbreviated Grey Cup, as we say. The 2021 was technically an abbreviated Grey Cup celebration, although it was an awesome week in Hamilton. But very excited yeah. for this year's. Yeah, and Tiger Cats were in that game and we know they've got a little work to do but that's that's how they do it make it interesting make it exciting keep it the is, fans on the edge of their seat all season long one thing i wanted to ask you about that game against montreal the tiger cats on offense they passed 47 times they rushed just nine times now it could have been because they were trailing do you think it was because of that or was that game plan that's a big discrepancy 47 pass plays compared to nine run plays. Yeah. Uh, I think it, I, I think the majority of that would fall to, you know, being behind and just trying yeah. m- moving the ball in the field. It come, it's also about that first down efficiency. It's not, you know, if it's really hard to run the ball on, on second and seven, second and nine, you know, repeatedly. And, uh, so, uh, you know, you give it a couple of shots, you, you know, and, and James Butler, uh, you know, hoping hoping that we see, a, you know, a great deal of success from him in, in this coming match versus Ottawa. But uh, when it's not there, you know, if you're a coordinator, is is the second quarter of an actual football game the time to work on your run game to, like, figure it out? No, <laughs> like, you, you know, you've got to go and try to you got to do what's working today right now. Like, you can't figure it out. It's not a preseason game and it's not. 
you know, practice or training camp. And so when something's not working that night, you know, and the Ticats have had their offensive line yes. uh, uh, injuries as well. And so, yeah. you know, we, we're not exactly meaning we as, you know, analysts and fans aren't, aren't, aren't exactly privy to uh, the, the, the functionality of the run game and, and those front five. But if it's just not working at that time, you, you've got to go elsewhere to find an answer. You don't have, the, you're, you don't, you're not, you're not allowed or you don't have the allowance of and freedom to just try to figure your way through it and get a, get a run game going. If, uh, and so that's Matt Schultz had the ball in his hand, like you said, to throw it 47 times and that's a heavy burden and you know the you know the more the more times you throw the ball the the higher the probability becomes of throwing an interception as well of course yep and he had two in in the game you mentioned the turnovers tiger cats it's been a couple of seasons now where they know they need to win the turnover battle and have struggled to do so but you can't win the turnover battle if you don't get any takeaways and now it's two straight games where the tiger cats don't have any takeaways and Maybe you attribute that to the the other team and doing a good job with ball security, but that's an area where you just know the the defense is wanting to improve. Yeah, um, it's just so interesting to me that they, that the Ticats have struggled in both the giveaways and takeaways. Like you know, that's that's that'll lead to a really poor looking ratio. Um, but but they're so they really are separate categories. I mean, it's totally, it's two different, two different, you know, parts of the team, two different skill sets. It's all, it, but the mindset is one, the ball, the, 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 the mindset of a team culture of ball security, that's, that's a consistent thing across offense, defense, special teams, but the actual skill set and, you know, ability of takeaways and giveaways are different. And the Ticats have struggled on, on both sides of it. Um, Jeremiah Mazzoli, it's been a year since he's played. He'll want, you know, he, he, he uh, He's going to have some rust to get out as well. So can the Ticats secondary, unfortunately, also a position group that's had some injury and adversity, yeah. can they take advantage uh, of of uh, Jeremiah getting back into rhythm? Maybe um, you'd hope so. And you've got to remember, and we have actually seen some some evidence of this. But you know, you've got a coach, a defensive uh, head coach in Orlando Steinauer, uh, and a lifelong. Uh, special teams coordinator who is committed to turnovers and ball security. You, those guys are tackling with their hatchets out, as they say, coming in with a hand on the, on the ball. Um, and so you just keep at it doing the right things. And, and this defense and special teams, you hope that that produces some turnovers. Well, let's address what you mentioned, the, the secondary. And so Lawrence Woods is out. Dexter Lawson, rookie. will start on that field side corner. Richard Leonard, Consistent. We were talking about it earlier. You could probably pencil him in for his five tackles, one or two knockdowns. Maybe he's the guy that gets a, a takeaway. He's always good for, for a handful in a season. On the other side, Kenneth George, rookie corner, uh, JV and Elliott, and no Tunde. Tunde Adelike is out for the Tiger Cats. Stavros Katsantonis, he's had a, a good special team season. He had an interception in the, in the preseason. He's... Uh, very, very capable replacement, but Tunde might be the best safety in the CFL. So missing him, what does that do to the secondary of the Tiger Cats? Yeah, well, it does make you make a Tiger Cat fan thankful for Stavros Katz and Tonus, who's kind of for the years he's been in Hamilton, fills in and and plays well. I mean, I really like the way he plays football, and he's a he, he's always got his nose in the ball to, in special teams. And he's filled in and made big tackles and big plays as a free safety when he's had to as well. You know, yeah, it is troubling. Tunde Adelike on on the sixth game. That's not a, you know necessarily a permanent thing, but it's not obviously a, what what you'd like to see uh, either. So, um, it, it's 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 the story of football. And and you know what? It's almost like if you if this was the. Uh, <laughs> Edmonton Audio Network or BC does does every team are they all out there complaining about their injuries probably uh, you know it's, it's it is a part of the sport but I don't know it does really kind of seem to be to hit the Ty Cats in uh, specific position groups you know repeatedly or or just all at once sometimes and uh, we'll see how these guys can guys like Stavros Katsantonis and, and and some of these old linemen who are filling in and bouncing around can uh, can can produce. Yeah, I, I have I have high hopes for them, and the game is at seven o'clock, the kickoff. But keep in mind the 
Tiger Cats pregame presented by Greenworks starts at 6. So it's an hour pregame show. You're going to want to tune into that with Bubba O'Neill and Andy Fantuz because it's our Greenworks Listen to Win contest. Listen for a keyword. So they'll give you a keyword in that pregame, and then somebody's going to win a Greenworks 40-volt, 16-inch cordless lawnmower. So again, Tiger Cats pregame starts at 6 o'clock on Saturday. You can listen at listen.tiecats.ca get that keyword win that 40 volt 16 inch cordless lawnmower game changer i've got one of those you don't need to worry about gas it's a great mower the battery lasts forever so it's uh it's amazing you'll want to tune into pregame for all the great information and then listen to the game but also hey one of the lawnmower is not too bad either not bad at all very nice <laughs> Uh, a couple of guys I'm interested in seeing, and uh, I'm sure Tiger Cats fans are too. Jared Hewitt playing on the interior of the defensive line. It's, uh, you know, it seems to be a lot of depth on that defensive line for the Tiger Cats, and we're going to get to see the, the rookie Hewitt, and maybe that's an area where the Tiger Cats want to get uh, a little more pressure on the quarterback. They did a pretty good job against Cody Fajardo, but it's it's one of those things. If you can keep the quarterback on the run and under pressure and uncomfortable, that helps other aspects, right? The, here's another unbelievable stat that, that that came out from the league this year. If a quarterback's been sacked on a drive, there has not been a single touchdown produced uh, after on that same drive this season. Hmm. If So if the defense gets to the quarterback no touchdowns have have been uh, res, have resulted from those drives. I mean, that's really telling what how how hard that is. the CFL it's tough. That's the that's for an offensive game, you got to remember the one big thing that swings that pendulum back towards defensive favor is that there's only two chances to get the first down. So if you and if you take mm-hmm. a 7-yard loss, 5-yard loss, which would be a totally normal, you know, loss for, on a quarterback sack, it, it really it, the 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 probability of moving the chains again is way 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 down. Yeah. Um and another, and you're right. That's another area where you'd love to see uh, that tight cat defense increase a little production, and, and that the quarterback sacks along with some takeaways. Tyreek McAllister, this guy, I, I'm saying Carthel Flowers Lloyd is going to be a star in the next year or two, maybe even this season. He's he's all over the place. We saw him in the preseason. He's been a special teams nightmare. He has a block punt this season. Love watching him. He's going to yeah. get in, himself into the lineup on a on a permanent basis somehow on defense. But Tyreek McAllister could be that guy on offense. He's he's listed as a slot back and a returner for this game against Ottawa, but he's also a running back, so he can do a little of everything. And I remember watching him in his very first practice, and he stood out. Who's this number thirty five out there? And not many guys, and they're very new to a team, stand out in their in their very first practice. So he's going to get a, a huge opportunity, it appears. And this guy spent a little time in the NFL, but McAllister could be one of those hidden gems that the the management and scouting staff has has discovered. I'm excited to see what he can do. Are you? Yeah, I certainly am. And we saw him a little bit on special teams in the Montreal game, and then. You know he's lined up at, you know, in, on the depth chart. We're going to see him a little bit, you know, out as a wide receiver or a slot back there. And you know, it's you've got the balancing of of the different identifiers for players, national and designated uh, national and stuff. And and Duke Williams, of course, is behind him. So we're going to see a lot of Duke Williams as well. Yeah. But McAllister, I'm guessing he's going to kind of get plugged in around where he can in the backfield and then split out as well. So. Interesting. I think in 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 our conversation with the run game, Tommy Condell has always been uh, part of his run game. It includes receivers. I mean, that's just part of part of the nature of the Ticat offense. And so, I'm guessing that McAllister will sort of be creatively worked into the to the run game for sure. And maybe we'll see some passing as well. So it's an important game for the Tiger Cats. Pre-game show at 6 o'clock, kickoff at 7 o'clock. The Ottawa Red Blacks are at Tim Hortons Field. Please be there. Should be a beautiful evening. Got the South Plaza Saturday. So that'll be a lot of fun for the fans. But uh, what's happening on the field is most important. And, and the fact that the Tiger Cats are the only team in the East Division without a win. But they win that game, and they're right back in the mix. Finishing second, first, still not out of the question. They lose that game, and it's too early to say they they still can't catch those teams ahead of them. But 
boy, that, that makes a big difference. Ottawa with two wins or tied with Ottawa with, with one win. This this is a pretty important game. It is, and it seems there's constantly a lot of seasons it's been you've played all these West teams in these summer months. And this is, you know, after, after the game uh, this weekend against Ottawa, you've played all your East Division opponents once. And you don't want to, you know, go zero for three against those East teams. You know, like we said, it's sort of, that is sort of the difference between this year and last year. You know, a win this weekend is, you know, really, really vital to to how they progress through the season. Uh, being that uh, each they've already played their East Division opponents, uh, Montreal and Toronto already having gotten a win against Hamilton. So, uh, great great night to be great why not why not go out there and get your first win uh hamilton and i'm certainly excited to get up there rj with you and call the game yep yeah it's gonna be a a lot of fun to see what the tiger cats have done in this in this bye week oh and by the way the drone show remember the drone show got rained out in the home opener ah the drone show presented by first ontario will happen after the game and Looking at the forecast, it's going to be beautiful, so there shouldn't be any reason for it not to happen. So if you're in attendance, stay afterward, enjoy the show, and we'll be uh, celebrating pride at the stadium during that game as well. So it's going to be uh, uh, a lot happening for you if you can make it to Tim Hortons Field. If you can't, please tune into the Ticats Audio Network, listen.ticats.ca. Myself and Luke Tasker will have the call. Andy and Bubba will have the pregame at 6 o'clock. Luke, looking forward to this one against Ottawa. We'll see you there. Me too, RJ. See you there. Thanks for listening to Tie Cats this week. It's been another busy week for your Hamilton Tiger Cats. Luke Tasker and RJ Broadhead have covered it all, and now we would like to hear from you. Email us anytime at gameday at Subscribe to the Tie Cats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.